Good morning and uh, sorry for that. At the outset, I would like to thank the EIOC, the scientific committee and Dr. Twinkle for giving me this opportunity. Uh, in fact, this course has been, uh, been there for at least four years now and uh, we, we keep on talking about newer and newer things in IL power calculations. So I'm going to talk about IL power in abnormal situation and I'm going to stick to long eyes and short eyes or you can say very long eyes and very short eyes only. So let's start with the long eyes. When do we identify or call a lo as, some, uh, as an eye as a long eye? We mean that the axial length is more than 24.5 millimeters. Now, what are the issues with an eye which is more than 24.5 mm? Well, the two, the two issues are there could be a measurement error and there could be a formula errors because as the eyeball grows, we need to have a different and a very specific formula for that. So coming back to very high myopic patients and how can we have a measurement error? Well, the axial length measurement is what uh, is where we will falter and one of the problems is the fixation issue. The patient might not be fixating properly but more importantly anatomical one is the posterior staphyloma and this is the reason that these eyes need a, an optical barometer and we, we have tried and not to any immersion. Of course, you all know there is no contact biometry in this modern days. Well, we might go ahead, but at least immersion, but most probably in all these patients, an optical biometry. <clears throat> why why do we have measurement errors in high myopia? There is a vitreous liquefaction in eyes with axial myopia and so the refractive index of vitreous may be different. For us till now, the refractive index was like uh, one glow fits all, but no, now we have understood that different parts of the eye will have different refractive index. So the Gullstrand standard refractive index is no more accurate due to the longer optical path and it also leads to an overestimate of the axial length, especially giving you an hyperopic surprise. So Wong-Cock formulas for adjusting in axial lens in eyes more than 25.2 was actually, uh, is actually a very good one and uh, it is uh, uh, a formula which a lot of people also use, Holiday, Hagis, Ersarkety and Hoffer Q, these were the ones which were actually used. But the long eye Wong-Cock adjustment is something that we should all understand. It, it compenses the overestimation of the axial length. The mat, this Wong-Cock uh, adjustment reduces the axial length by a formula specific coefficient. This is all math. Holiday works better up to axial length of 26.5. SRKT works better for axial length more than 27 millimeters. These are all quite aggressive methods and they give surprises of myopic errors. So ULIB modified and reoptimized it, ULIP. So better to go to ULIP site to use this Wong-Cock adjustment. I'll explain to you in the next slide. And never use all these formulas in post-refractive surgery eyes. They are a different subset of eyes. <clears throat> so the Wong-Cock adjustment or the ULIP uh, uh, formula, it is uh, used for axial length of more than 26.5. There is a holiday one optimized axial length and there is an SRKT optimized axial length also and these have been very well validated. Another tool in the market or the new toy in the market is the Argos, the Argos swept source OCT biometer. What is so unique about is sum of all segments. As you can see, it, in, it believes that a segmented method should be there for each part of the axial length because there are different structures involved. There are different, different refractive indexes for each of them. And so the Argos measures, <coughs> measures an axial length specifically for each segment of the eye. And uh, uh, this is the formula for that. And the axial length is become the sum of all segments or SOS. So the spatial formulas for such kind of biometry are the Barat true axial length or the BTL which is specially designed for SOS only. Other Pearl DGS and EO, EVO formulas are also there for Argos uh, SOS biometry. But uh, if you say a specific one, it's the Barat true axial length uh, formula which is for SOS uh, machines only. Uh, a nice study was done in 2018 by Malis and for long guys, the top three options at that time in 2018 were Olson, the Barrett and the Haggis unadjusted uh, formula. Ones to avoid, we have to be very sure, is to be Holiday 1 and the Hoffer Q. The things to note in this study were that Holiday 2, uh, Holiday 2 has been updated and improved. 
The Wongkok adjustment is now great and the Hale RBF, Kane and EVO were not included in this 2018 study. So subsequently, the formulas which are now used is, for example, in all long guys, we would go ahead with Barrett, Kane, Hill RBF and Olson because they work very well in all the lengths of long guys. If you want to use the third generation formulae, go to ULIB Wongkok Modified Holiday 1 for up to axial length of 26.5 and ULIB Wongkok Modified SRK T for axial length of more than 27 mm. The newer modification of Holiday, the NLR for high myopia also gives a good performance. So in summary for long guys, optical biometry of course overperforms the immersion biometry. This is the gold standard now. Newer SOS, sum of all segment biometry is an emerging concept. The Kane Barrett Hill RBF version 3.0 works very well. And for third generation formula, use only ULIP modified Wong code ad adjustment. Now coming to short eyes. Well, when do we uh, quantify the short eye? Less than 22 millimeters of axial length. And what are the parameters that are very important? One of them is the axial position of the eye becomes very important in this type of uh, eyes. Higher eye power, higher, higher power eye oil, small shift in position, big impact uh, leads to that. And only a one millimeter shift of the effective lens position, the ELP, results, results in a 2.75 adapters at spectacle plane for a 34 adapter eye oil. And mind you, I'm talking only about the short eyes where the eye oil power calcul, uh, eye oil powers are more than 30 adapters. The shape factor in eye oil design varies with power and high degree of spherical abrasion in higher power spherical eye oils also is a is an issue. For short eyes, the accurate measurement is a key again and the two important parameters are the axial length. Error in axial length measurements have higher impact in short eyes. For example, error caused by one millimeter of corneal compression leads to in an average 2.5 adapters but in a short eye it leads to a surprise of as high as 3.75 adapters and that's the reason we have to be even more accurate in uh, short eyes. Similarly the effective lens position, the accurate prediction of post operative AC depth is particularly important in short eyes because an error of only just 0.25 mm leads to uh, 0.1 adapters in 30 millimeters of axial length. And in excellence of near about 20, it leads to a surprise of 0 0.6 diopters. So all these things, when they add up, they, they give you uh, at the end of the procedure about 3, 4, 5 diopters of surprise. And that is what you would definitely not want. <clears throat> so for short eyes, which formula? Well, offer Q, it is an outdated concept. It was when third generation versions formulas when you use. For some reason, it got stuck in everybody's head that you are supposed to use offer Q, holiday one, maybe better, and newer methods like Barrett and Hill RBF also do much better. <clears throat> Studies conducted in 2016 by Kane and 2018 by Bellis, and it actually showed that offer Q is one of the poorest formula for short eyes. Barrett and holiday one performed better in 21 and 22 millimeters of range. And this is the study of OLCR or the Landstar machine versus the IOL master machine. And they found out that if you are going to use a Landstar for short eyes, use Olsen standard standalone or a Barrett or Olsen OL, OLCR and the Hague is one in the holiday formulae. But for IOL master, you can use a Barrett or a T2 and the Hague is or holiday one formulae. So, Oculix and Olsen ray tracing show the smallest spread and smallest systemic systematic offset. Barrett Universal 2 is widely regarded as the best conventional formula. It does not perform well in this, in the series of eyes and is actually worse than older formula. Holiday 2 shows no improvement over Holiday 1. Hoffer Q no better than other formula. Hill RBF performs as good as Hagis but no better, uh, uh, but not better. More than 50% of data sets, uh, leads to error message of out of bind whenever you are trying to use this formula. And entering lens thickness data, the CCT uh, uh, order, uh, order and the white to white into the Hill RBF makes absolutely no difference in high power calculation. We were told a lot of things about all this. So what is coming up for short eyes? The lens thickness can improve eye oil position prediction because as you saw ELP, the post-surgical ELP is of very importance. 
newer SS OCT with lens tomography, modeling of crystal lens is possible. Superimposing lens pre and post op data will help in understanding of the problem. <coughs> so what should we do for short eyes now? Well, ray trace the tracing works better, oculix and phaco optics performs better. Barrett and Holliday should be avoided in short eyes, while the Hagees, Olsen and Hill RBF version results are very comparable. Very important in, uh, in uh, very high hypermetropia is that you might need to customize your IOL or you might even do need to do a piggyback IOL. We might go ahead and make a flap and try to do an adjustment, but as you all know, a bioptics with a hyperopic correction is always very difficult. So, uh, <clears throat> the first, uh, there is a formula uh, for all these uh, kind of patients where you want to do piggyback IOL. First are in the bag, second in the sulcus is the norm. You use holiday IOL constant R formula. This works very well. Many times uh, we, we might not have to do this. This is also done by the suppliers. <clears throat> and in the second in the bag, intra lenticular membranes, IOL opacification, CDVA loss, all these things are a problem. But we need to just address that we might need to do a piggyback, piggyback IOL in extreme hyperopia patients. So in summary, the newer IOL calculation preferences are for standard uh, cases. This is one slide which sums up all. Standard cases for normal axial length, Barrett Universal 2, Hill RBF version 3.0, Olsen and Holiday 1, or even the SRKT are good. <clears throat> but for high myops, which we qualify as 20.5 to 27, Holiday 1 with Wankok modification or the ULIP modification, Barrett Universal 2, the Kane, the Olsen and the Hill RBF version 3.0 also work very well. For very long guys, which is more than 27 millimeters, Barrett Universal 2 and Hill RBF version 3.0 and Kane work very well. And for short eyes, well again, not very very accurate, but the ray tracing with ILT and the Olsen and Oculex formula are going to work well. Again, Hill RBF version 3.0, Hoffer Q and Hague is optimized uh, and the Barrett Universal 2 can be used for the short eyes. Thank you very much.